What is up everybody? What's that? Yes, you're getting a part two to Having Pride. After finishing the Sandersides video, June was at its end and we really wanted to get the Pride video out during Pride month, so we rushed through the edit and some things were cut that we now really regret. There was also some miscommunication about rules to follow during the edit, like don't include anyone unnecessarily reiterating a point, which led to unfortunate cuts that were more of people relating to one another rather than needlessly repeating one another. And people from different sides of the community being being able to relate to one another is really important. We just didn't give ourselves enough time to talk through the edit of this video, or really even to think about it, and we now see the problem with trying to rush out a video about an important subject matter, and we plan on starting much earlier on projects like these in the future. Now, we are about to cut back over to the Gaty Bunch. Keep in mind, certain clips are going to be repeated from the first video to give context to the new points that were left out on the cutting room floor. All right. Over to the queer corner. Introduce yourself and your pronouns. All right. Hi, I'm Quill. I don't have preferred pronouns. I use them all. Hi, I'm Leo. I'm he. Hello. I'm Terrence. He, him. I'm Paige. She, her. I am Joan. I use they, them pronouns. Hello. My name is Chandler, and I also use they, them pronouns. My name is Talon, and I also use they, them pronouns. And I'm Thomas, and I use he, him pronouns. Joe. Can I ask <gasps> uh, what your like celebrity, like the real people crushes are? Or like your Ooh. first, like, well, you can say any celebrity crush, but like, who was like one of your first celebrity because mine was Kiki Palmer in the Keep It Moving 2000. Oh, wow. I'm going to say Zendaya, if you see this at any point in time, <laughs> just know I love you. If we marry, you just don't know it. Okay. Yeah, if you don't have a crush on Zendaya, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there are not people that exist that don't have a crush. <laughs> My first celebrity crush was Abigail Breslin in Nims Island. Oh. When I started like telling people that, I was already older, and she's the same age as me, by the way. And so people were like, she was like a child, and I was like, no, like when I was 12, I also had a crush on 12. But yeah, that was definitely my first crush. She was very like outdoorsy and like loved the ocean, and I was like, yeah, it's me, I love her. <laughs> Emily Browning was one of mine. She was my first, like, I'm definitely, definitely not straight. So Emily Browning, she was in the Series of Fortune Events movie. Oh, she was also in this movie called Sucker Punch. And oh, that's the way I look like Kim, pull up movie. this picture specifically. I love that movie. <laughs> Ooh. Also, Sucker Punch, all the women in that, I'm just like, oh! Yeah, I love that movie. I would say the very first one was like, when I was really little, I did have a crush on Jonathan Taylor Thomas, the voice of Simba. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You know this. I used to have a really big crush on oh, Queen Latifah. <laughs> really? Yeah, I thought she was really gorgeous, and I loved her singing. And I loved her attitude, too. She's like the epitome of elegant. Yeah, she's like a goddess. She's literally yeah. a goddess. When I was young, she was kind of a consistent person that mm. I either looked up to or found like really beautiful. Well, I like that. I have trouble figuring myself out. I thought I was straight until I fell in love with my best friend. I'm a girl, she's a girl. So have any of you ever had a crush on your best friend or something? Love. Sorry, yeah, that is Sorry like... if it's too personal, love you all. <laughs> Having a crush on a yes gay struggle. Oh, so right. I feel like the most important thing in situations like that is to say what you need to say without any expectations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just yeah. say it because you need to say it, not because you need to hear anything back. Because there's no guarantees. Yeah, mm. yeah 100%. That's perfect. Yeah. I always expect the worst. Yeah. She says she hates me and she never wants to talk to me. <laughs> like, that's the worst case. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> anything above that is great. Yeah. I, I literally, I told people that I have crushes on them for the express purpose of getting rejected so that I could move on. <laughs> yeah, Joan tried that on me. Didn't work. <laughs> 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 love that. It's your classic love story. <laughs> I definitely had like a huge crush on my friend my senior year of high school and it was horrible. I was with her like 24 7 like all the time we were inseparable <laughs> and there were multiple times where I like almost made a move but I didn't and then she ended up moving away to California and that broke my heart and I was like super, super, super depressed my freshman year of college. And I still talk to her every single day, like my freshman year of college. And I like I had never told her it was something that like haunted me like for a long time. But eventually I was like, I still think about this and I need closure. So like I need to call her and tell her. Mm. So like I called her and we talked for like three hours before I was finally like, Hey, by the way, famous last words. Um, yeah, by the way, um, I was in love with you for several years, and there were a lot of times where I almost like told you or like kissed you, and she was like, Paige, I know. And I was like, what? <laughs> she was like, I know that. And I had feelings for you too. And I was like, oh, perfect. This is great. What a nightmare. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, it did help me in a way. 
time because it was like that was our time and we and it didn't happen and that's okay and now we're different people but we're still very good friends. I got one more and then I'll shut up. <laughs> uh, when I was in middle school, my friend uh, who's a, a girl woman she was like hey so like i think i might like you and i was like that's interesting because i think i like men <laughs> and now we're like the best of friends oh good so, i remember i uh, i signed it in my friend's senior yearbook that was the last thing i said i was like by the way i've always had a huge crush on you <laughs> and i closed it and i handed it back oh, God. nice how do i get people to use my pronouns preferred name because despite coming out many times my friends won't and i'm afraid to correct because i don't want to seem pushy or give them reason to make some stupid jokes over it. My advice has always been, if you have a friend that supports you, to go to them and ask them if they would be able to advocate for you. That way, you're not the one that's put on the spot every single time, because that's exhausting. That's yeah. interesting. That's exactly. If you are that friend, I think it's important to confer with the person you're doing that mm -hmm. for, because I, I, I try to make a point of asking my friends, how would you prefer me to do that? Like, if I, if I introduce you to someone, would you like me to be like, this is Joan, they use they pronouns. Right, yeah. Or would you like to do that yourself because there are some situations where like I know Joan your preference was don't do it if you aren't very sure of how someone's yeah, unless, going to react. Yeah, I don't. I'm pretty guarded about it so I'd rather not someone just tell someone about me because I don't know if that person's going to be cool about it. Right. Yeah. I had a yeah. classmate that outed me to a teacher. Ugh. They are also a trans person but they are a lot more out than I was at school especially towards teachers and I was not okay with it. It ended up being okay. The teacher was respectful enough to like at least give it a try and was a very kind man and didn't do anything against me but like that's a thing too you might have good intentions in helping somebody out by be like no this person's pronouns are this but you have to ask permission before you do something like that because you might accidentally be outing that person to someone that that person doesn't want them to know that mm. you know it could be a safety issue yes what was your first romantic experience like with someone of the same gender was it weird or hard to come to terms with or did it just feel very natural and normal <laughs> It was very hard to come to terms with. It was because I was dealing with a very religious upbringing. I think it goes back to flawed logic. It goes to having to resolve things with your own inner morality. But at the same time, you have these very, very strong feelings for somebody. And you're like, why is that strong feeling something that feels both so right and so wrong? It's cliche as that sounds. I already knew that I liked women at this point, And so I was just kind of like, Right. Yeah, yeah, cool, good. I'm, uh, I'm happy about this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny because, like, I learned that I'm aspec. I'm demisexual and um, panromantic. For the longest time, I was trying to garner more sexual experience for social reasons. Because, like, I had a really huge crush on a guy at one point. And, like, he was a year younger than me. And so I was in 10th grade and he was in 9th grade. And when he came in, he was already, like, pursuing, like, relationships and stuff. And I was like, I haven't even been thinking about this. Like, I'm so behind. And then so I started pursuing that sort of stuff. And uh, I have so many regrets now because I did that. Like, there's so many things that, like, I pursued and went for that, like, were always always not great. Never yeah, good. I've definitely had similar experiences. Yeah. Like with guys. Yeah. It's just like, I did it because I was like, oh, this is like what I'm supposed to do and like what it's supposed to be. And like, yeah, this is fine. Like I like guys. And now there are so many things that I wish I didn't do that I was like, yeah. wow, that was awful the entire right. time. Like, I wish I could just. <laughs> yeah. you know, there's so many that I wish yeah. I could just sever from my history. Yeah. I've had experiences with men and women, but the first positive experience I ever had was with a genderqueer person, and mm. the only positive experiences I've had have been with non-binary people. I'm sure the regrettable romantic escapade is a relatable situation for anybody on all points of the spectrum, but I know that maybe being of a certain identity can complicate that as well, like put its own little wrench in the gears. What's the takeaway from that? I guess it's just to make sure that it is on your terms, if it can be. Really try and listen to your feelings. Like there are so many times where Paige and I ignored our discomforts in those situations oh, and just pushed forward mm. because we thought it was something we had to do. I didn't want to, and I did it anyway. Yeah. A lot of people say to gay women, you'll like it, you just haven't found the right guy. So I was like, oh, I guess so. And so then I would like go through guys and I was like, I'm so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing that I kind of want to touch on is like, it's okay to wait until you are comfortable with your own self and your own identity. Oh, yeah. I identified as asexual for a while until I met Joan and I identify as demisexual, but I do this thing where if someone asked me out, I would always say yes. 
I don't really know why, but I would. And then they would <laughs> get into a more romantic and sexual sense because that's what happens in a lot of normal relationships. But the thing is, that's not what needs to be normal. It's okay if you're not comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. You have to tell them though, and I didn't. I would just break up with them and never talk to them again. Mm. Which is not how to deal with things. <laughs> it's okay if you don't know what's going on, but putting other people through constantly dating people and breaking up with them to find yourself can be really harmful to yourself as well as other people. So really just take your time. You don't have to be experienced. You don't have to be an adult in that sense. You don't have to grow up so fast when you're young and trying to figure out who you are. Mm -hmm. Take your time. There are people who don't have a sexual experience until they're in their like adult adulthood. Yeah. And there are people who never, and that is completely okay. Oh yeah. Something that was nice and very low pressure about when Talon and I first got together, because we both had an understanding that we were on the asexual spectrum, is that we went into that relationship both acknowledging we might never get physically intimate with each other and that's fine. If you're asexual or on the asexual spectrum, I think that's a pretty important thing to lead with because it's important to communicate those things and for, to have your partner or potential partner know where you stand with stuff like that. It so. helps everyone in the situation. Yeah, even if it's uncomfortable or you don't know how to say it, like, you gotta. It was so funny, like, how much it felt like the door opened once I learned what it truly meant to be on the asexual spectrum. Because for the longest time, I equated, like, sexual attraction with just attraction in general. There were so many confusing moments where I found myself romantically attracted to people, but I was like, but I don't want to sleep with them, so I guess I'm not. But as soon as I learned, of, like, what asexuality really was, it's like this door open where I was like, there's so many beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize how many people I think are so gorgeous that I assumed weren't because I didn't want to sleep with them. Mm. I like the awakenings. Yeah. We were talking about being sexual, whatever. Please be safe. Yes. Like you're saying, you yes. do make sure that you do take that step. Please be safe, you know. And get tested. And there are yes. places yeah. that you can go for free testing. As an LGBT plus person, you can go for free testing. So look for local places. It is important. Yes. And get tested regularly. You can't mm -hmm. just get tested once and think that that's it. Yeah. Do we want to figure out like a nice clear resolving? Oh, we could show you what Gavin. Gavin oh my gosh, that's so cute. It's, you guys are doing great. Keep up the good work, meow meow. It's okay to be yourself no matter what people say from your dearest friend, Kat. Talk, Talk with pride. pride. I think Gavin sums it up pretty nicely. And that is it! Okay, we're happy now. Everything has been included that we want included. I hope you guys enjoyed those extra discussions. I think it's important. As much as we are different, there are similar experiences which help us relate to one another and that's super validating. It helps us keep in mind we are not alone and that is super important. So I hope that you all enjoyed what we talked about. Pride Month may be over, but uh, don't ever stop being proud of who you are because I know we're not going to stop being proud of who you are. And until next time, take it easy, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Peace, Peace out! out.